On today's Man of the Apes, we're about to go to Mario's. Woo-wee! The swirls. Mmm, alcohol. The daily podcast where we break down every minute of the Planet of the Apes movies and finally come yeah, to it. the end of Escape from the Planet of the Apes. Wrap them up. Here we are at the end. I'm We've, sad to see it go. It was a good movie. It, it's a great movie. And I'll, I'm, I'm going to get into final thoughts about it in a little bit. Um, Sean, it's going to be a pretty easy description. And I'm yeah. not, not going to insert today's minute because it's essentially silent. Silence, yeah. And so just tell us what, what do we see in this minute. Uh, we're starting minute 98 with a credit for lawyer being Roy E. Glenn Sr. And then it ends with a fade to black. So one of the things that in the, the setup today that Richard and I were talking about, and I tried to find when the MPAA changed the regulation on listing the, the credits at the end. Yeah, because it, you would list a lot of the production design, camera work, etc. at front. front yeah. uh, I know that George Lucas greatly challenged that in 1977 when he demanded there be no credits before anything with Star Wars. So I know it was around that era mm-hmm. when they started going, okay, you have to list everybody. And it was because the people needed you the, the cater. And yeah, you've got to acknowledge everybody that is as an official credit, blah, 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 blah. But boy, when we get to this, hey, it is if literally. Pee, if you had to pee, this is a movie for you. It's like I'm, we're done. Go I bye. Know. Yeah. <laughs> no okay. post credit Re- scenes. Remind, reminder, nothing. Reminder of the cast. Reminder of the director. Reminder of the of of the. Well, Ricardo, he got the uh, he gets an end credit. Gets the end. Yeah, yeah. He gets the end credit. And you know, we kind of teased yesterday that I, I'm one of those that's of the point, the mind that I'm kind of sick of the post credit scenes because it's like good. God Almighty! I end up sitting here for another twenty minutes well, to see well, it, for, and a lot of times they're not paid. But it's the number of animators that we have to use now that really kind of right. drags out the, the. And then the lawyers, and then all the right everybody's all assistants the and all this kind of and stuff. And then the people that did the opening credits, and then the people that did the closing credits, and then right. Well, and, I, then, and then all the music, and yeah. who owns the music, and who performed the music, and, and ASCAP. And I recently told a friend, I'm like, no one should ever do a post credit scene again after El Camino because El Camino is the single longest greatest <laughs> post credit scene, scene, scene ever. that's ever occurred. Did you ever? <laughs> no. Do you like Breaking Bad? Uh, yeah. So on Netflix, they did a follow up with the. Jesse oh, it's King. out already. Oh, yeah, it's been out. El Camino, and, okay. and, and I like it. Don't get me wrong, but, but it's basically but, a giant post credit. It is. It it follows, you, uh, Jesse, Jesse what happened to okay. him afterwards. And it's, re- it's really good. But the more I thought about it, I was like, well, technically, this is kind of a long post credit scene. <laughs> it just sort of wraps up what you kind of thought kind of happened. And it's good. All right. Watch All right. it. Well, it's well, good. Yeah, I know. I love Breaking But I, I just don't like them. Here we, we simply get our, our cast. Yeah. We get. And I forgot to bring this up in the last minute, but M. Emmett Walsh, who ended the last minute with his credit coming up. Mm hmm. He was, you know, he he was in the opening credits. We saw him in the beginning of the movie, and then never saw him again. Uh, you know, well, but, for, but when, but when would, you when you look at the number of of actual actors in the film, they really didn't use a lot of actors. There was more the pre- extras there's than the actors. President, there's uh, I guess the people on the right, we, we didn't get. We got only a couple of the speaking people. Doesn't, yeah. the, or, doesn't the orderly get mentioned in yeah, this? Yeah, yeah, he gets it. The aide, yeah. But you know that that's kind of the the thing of it. And M. 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 Walsh is such an odd char- uh, character actor at this point because he really, in my recollection of film history, doesn't come into my mind until Blade Runner. That's when yeah. he really kind of hits, and I'm like, from that point on, and then he's in Blood Simple, and he does all those other things, but definitely an early performance, but so little is said here. We get the the Ape Jack, or App Jack, I don't know how Arthur P. Jacobs did his uh, production company, but Ape, uh, App Jack, Ape Jack, and yeah. then we get 20th Century Fox, and, and that's done. all we see. Yep. That's and it. Done. See ya. By the way, I hope y'all aren't depressed. Hope you'll come back, tell your friends about the movie. 
I, I tried to find something on whether uh, it, it, we think about uh, episode seven and that they were able to get uh, um, what's his name to come back specifically because he was going to die. Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford. Yeah. And so I was kind of wondering to, did my, Roddy to myself, come back I, saying, Roddy and, and Kim, did they me? come back? I'll come back and do this film again. If it's I'll, the last if one. I die. So I kind of wondered that. I kind of went to look around and I, uh, the, the only thing I'd find was – uh, they, Kim Hunter basically doing an interview saying they, they had to beg her to come back for 10 days of shooting in Beneath because she just hated the whole process of getting in makeup and doing it mm-hmm. again. But then when they showed her this script, she said it was, she's, there was no question that she was going to do this because she loved the character so much. Well, she's so great. And she wanted to see so this film. See yeah. That. But it's interesting to think about the fact that they, yeah. had, they had to beg both mm. her to come back and they didn't get Roddy for the second one, right? But he was filming something else. Yeah. He was the only film he directed. He was directing it. But I, I'd made mention too with Kim Hunter that she developed a, and I forget what, what medication it was, but she developed a drug addiction of sorts to like Xanax or what, you know, something for anxiety after which movie the first, after one? I believe the second one and that she continued on with taking it through this. And, you know, she had a horrible, horrible problem with it because the anxiety of having that on her face and the, ir- the irony was, is that she and Roddy got Salminio in this and Salminio apparently had 10 times worse of a reaction to it. And she tried to help him through it. I don't know that she, gave me medication for it. But wow. I mean, I, I've had stuff on my face before and you know, and it's, it's kind of also like going in an MRI tube, that kind of thing where you're confined. I can only imagine that your day in day out process for, you know, six weeks is to put something on your face. She was saying they were doing the, um, the interview. She was talking about the commission scene. And once the extras were gone mm-hmm. from behind them, uh, they were then going to interact with the council, but they did not, they were no longer going to be seen. And so, the prosthetics were starting to be pulled off. And uh, at some point she goes, no, keep in mind, I'm no longer this character anymore. If I, if I don't have this on. Well, that's, that's, that's a good point. And also, but the prosthetics for this are for her to have that amount of claustrophobia is odd because it goes over your brow, Mm -hmm. the bridge of your nose to the snout of your nose and on your chin. I mean, around your eyes, your ears, all of that's still very open. I, I, that just must really be, have been something for her that was, and she said the only thing that didn't have an application on it was her eyes. Right, yeah. I mean, because her entire mouth I mean, covered. Yes, I mean, you she got she right here. Just, that's really about Everything it. was just, covered except for her eyes. Yeah. I, I don't know. That just it I wouldn't mean, bother you, me. I, I wonder if her ears are covered, too. So you start to – Maybe that's muted it. Yeah, because they did have fake ears on. Yeah. But you do you do wonder. I was I want, I did want to – I almost wanted to pull that out of, of an interview somewhere where she just said I was willing to come back and do this again. Because I thought it was a wonderful send off for the character, and yeah. I knew that I wasn't coming back. <laughs> well, <laughs> kudos to the two of them; they're great in this. So, Sean, our neophyte to the Planet of the Apes classic mm-hmm. films, what did you expect Escape from the Planet of the Apes to be? Well, I mean, the trailer gave you a lot, knowing that they're coming back from the future, and there's a child, and there's a kid. Yeah. Um, I I don't think I was expecting everybody to get killed at the end. Okay. I, like I think I was expecting there to be uh, maybe some sort of underground movement that takes them somewhere. Yeah. And let's you, you know maybe you think they're dead, but really they're in some and okay you know and the, they went to the Everglades or whatever. The Armando got them away, and so they're living out in the. And the forest or something. And so as much as we kind of teased that that was his idea, that's almost what you kind of expected. expected. Yeah. And so that's what maybe starts the, the planet the of the future. Apes. Yeah, exactly. It's, the a, talking recur- it's a, a, a whole loop. They're right. from the future, but they come into the past and they create the smart apes of the future, maybe. Okay. But not the, not everybody gets killed and a baby's left on its own. No. The, that was, a, the, that's actually kind of a little bit of a nice lead in because we're about to watch the trailer for Conquest. And Dane specifically says when he was writing this, when he saw the circular nature of what he was writing, he was very, very happy yeah. well, with what he's with the, car, the, the, the passage that he's making. This if is, there's one thing I want to throw in about this film before we step away is that Paul Dane's contribution begins to truly show in this film. The last film is a bit of a mess, and it doesn't seem like he probably was given a chance to really get into it. This film, for all the things we poked at, and I think the only reason we poked at it is because it's really a good movie. We just saw things, oh, I wish they'd done a little bit of this and it would amp this up. But for me, this is a dramatic improvement on the last one. And I want to ask each of you, and Sean, I'll start with you. Huh. If you have to rank the three, what's your ranking going oh, what? from worst to first? Well, like uh, uh, one, three, two. 
So that's your, actually, Planet, I, I said worst to first, but oh, you're going to go best to best, worst. Best to worst. Uh, One, three, two. Planet, escape, uh, beneath. Richard, is that your feeling as well? I, I would actually probably, I'd put uh, beneath as the worst. Yeah. I would actually might rank this a little bit higher for me than, than Planet just because of the building of the mythos. As a standalone, Planet's fantastic. Mm-hmm. But this idea that we're, we're building this universe, this movie makes me very happy. And you know what? It, to, and I'm going to apologize for the, the yeah, somebody, outside, Somebody's sorry. out cleaning the yard next door. Welcome to uh, Podcasting 101. For me, I, I'm, I hate to say this. I'm going to go with both of your answers. I think you're absolutely right. I think if I'm going to rank it, truly is film-to-film comparison, number one, without question, is the best because of everything it does to establish. Number three is a marked improvement over number two. However, if I'm stepping back and looking at the importance of the films, this may be the more important to the franchise because it truly, with reverence, takes the characters and says, here's a world they live in. Here are a set of rules. We're going to put things in that they have to struggle with, and now they go on from this. So with that in mind, here's the next question. What do you uh-huh. think the next movie you've heard is called uh, Conquest, of the, Conquest of the Planet of the Apes? What do you think it's about? Well, I, I D- just tell me what you would think. Have you ever thought about it? No, I haven't. Have uh, you seen any images from it? Uh, I've only I put the DVD in the player so I'll have it ready mm-hmm. for when I start making notes in a couple months. Uh and it's just very red. I can tell you that. Mm, the, the screen is very red. Uh it looks like a cityscape. Um if it's Conquest of the Planet of the Apes, and obviously there are more apes in it, uh, it makes it sound like the apes are going to start taking over the planet. This okay. is where the the turn happens, where humans become subjugated and apes become masters or something. All right, Richard, do you want to read IMDb's description for us of yeah, Conquest? I will. Uh, the IMDb description is, In a future world that has embraced ape slavery, Caesar, the son of the late Simeon's Cronius and Zira, surfaces almost 20 years of hiding with the authorities and prepares for a slave revolt against humanity. So Caesar, so Milo has changed his name to see, he's no, wait, well, I was about to say he's no longer using his slave name, but his mother gave him that name, so it's not a slave name, so I don't know why he would change his name. Because Caesar's is much up. more, it definitely has the connotation the of Roman king. Roman connotation. Like, yeah, leader. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right, so um, we're going to watch the trailer now. I asked... Uh, Richard's going to pull it up for he and I to watch. He's going to turn this up. I will edit this in in the background so that you can hear this audio a little bit better. Uh, we're going to give the three, two, one, so Sean can hit play on his end at the same time. We can all watch it. Uh, comment as you go. All Here right. we go. Are you both you boys yep. ready? All right. Three, two, one, go. Now the biggest, <laughs> the newest. Oh, okay. Somebody's on fire. Somebody's on fire. This shit we've is. We've got a on lot fire. of apes and like red costumes. Oh, a lot. Okay, so we've, we've, got a lot, we've got one in a green costume that seems to be in front. And we've got people. We've got people. We've got humans. Awesome. We've got riot gear. Awesome. Very industrialized looking area. Uh, you can see some map paintings. Oh, oh man. Torturing apes. Where we got Armando. They're, do, they're doing slave work, yeah. They, oh, Armando was leading a, across a group. Oh, I didn't see Armando. Oh, yeah, they're very Nazi looking yeah. uniforms there. And we, so, so is this like a police state? Almost looks like that. very yeah. police state yeah. looking. But the apes have got riot gear as well. We got sideburns. Yeah, we got some 70s hair. We got some turtlenecks going on. Yeah, we do. We have, a, we have a tireless future. We have no computers in the future. We're just pushing shit around with a stick. We have no women in the future either. We got cops with guns and shields yeah. shooting. Very. Man. We got fire everywhere. All right, we got overacting. <laughs> we got some uh, background masks. Watch the as man faces Why is he throwing gas at his revolution. own people? <gasps> Whose voice is that? That's Roddy. Yeah. My people will plot and plan for the inevitable day of man's downfall. So they're showing us the last minute of the movie, aren't they? They they just showed us the last ten minutes of the movie. That's what they're showing us, aren't they? It's a long action movie. Well, I mean, I feel like I'm watching the end of the yeah, movie. Yeah, but you, if you They're, were bitching so much, you're seeing apes like our apes. You see how much you're Finally, yeah. Around. I get to see them be strong. Yeah, this is what you wanted. Here yeah. Get so it. there we there get the credit. We get the... Lottie and Ricardo. I saw that, yeah. All right, wow. so, we, so now that we've seen Roddy's in it, 
do you, what, who do you think Roddy's playing? Well, he's Milo. But yeah, he's got to be Milo slash yeah. Caesar. Yeah. 